upon us. And I fluffin' love Game of Thrones. It took me literally over three full seasons to decide I loved it. Specifically during a certain part in season four, episode two. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Don't make me say it, because spoilers. But once that moment happened, oh, I went from zero to 60 in love and I never looked back. I already did a Glamagore version of Daenerys Targaryen, which you should check out if you haven't already. It'll be linked in the description below. But now to add to the Game of Thrones recreations. There's already a ton of White Walker tutorials on YouTube, but this has been so highly requested for so long, and they're so cool looking. So hopefully I can bring you some new options to achieve the look. To make this dude, I chose to do a mix of sculpting to get the basic shape, latex layering to make the shell of the prosthetic, and a cotton buildup for the line details. This is very similar to how we did the paranormal activity monster. This method of recreating a White Walker is fairly inexpensive and simple, but it is extremely time consuming. The whole thing can be directly sculpted onto your face with cotton and latex, very similarly to how I did this buildup straight onto the face, but that would take several very uncomfortable hours and would be more difficult to control the shape and details. Doing it off of your face for the most time consuming parts is your best option overall, if possible. Because of that, and since I do already have a life cast, I opted to first sculpt the basic structure of the face in clay on the life cast. For that, I just focused on building a prominent brow bone, chin, and cheekbones, and a wider and pointier nose. I combined elements for a few different white walkers, the details and colorings of ones like these, but following the general facial structure of the Night King. Use lots of reference pictures and as many angles as you can find. From there, I'm brushing over the whole thing with 99% alcohol on a chip brush to smooth the clay down a bit, and then I'm covering the sculpt in an even layer of liquid latex. Each layer should dry pretty fast so long as you're keeping them thin. I only did about three full layers before I started to add on the cotton buildup because I knew that the cotton would significantly strengthen the prosthetic enough to be peeled off in one piece later. For the cotton buildup, I took thin strands of a rolled out cotton ball, I laid them down on wet latex, and covered them in more latex. Common strategy here on Glam and Gore, but that's because it's so versatile and affordable. You have plenty of time after this to shape them with any stick or metal tool exactly how you want it before it dries and sets. I think the idea behind the design of White Walkers is like what a face would look like after years of walking into those intense winter winds. It literally looks like their skin has been blown back from their faces. So when you're laying down your lines, try to generally follow the shape of the face with that idea in mind as though it's being blown out from the center of the face. Basing this off of the Night King, specifically, his forehead is where things start to get a little different. It follows less of that windblown pattern and is more haphazardly bumpy with random ice horns lining his head like a crown. Which is such a crazy coincidence since he's also a king. Which is sarcasm. Basically, reference pictures are your friend, and so is improvising to fit your specific needs. In my case, I'm choosing not to do the full bald head of the Night King so that this is more recreatable for you guys, so I kept all the horns lower on the face than his really are. And to make the horns, I just use an air drying clay because it's lightweight and it's easier to get a solid projection from that than just cotton and latex alone. Though you can just use cotton and latex if that's what you got. If you use air drying clay, wait till it's somewhat dry and just wrap cotton and latex around the base to keep it on there. When you're done with the whole face, give it a few hours. Latex goes from white to yellow when dry, and at this point it should be pretty solid to the touch. Powder it with baby powder or any translucent makeup powder before we move on to the painting. The painting is actually fairly simple, albeit still time consuming. I started with covering the entire face in a white water activated paint. You could also use cream paints, grease paints, or alcohol activated paints. Then I used a light wash of a little bit of black with a little bit of blue on my brush to get this grayish color that has a hint of blue. I used a small fan brush to lay that color in every single depression between the lines. Usually I might just get that color on my brush with a lot of water and let the color run over the top of the whole sculpt and then the darker color would naturally seep into those lines but I suggest you avoid that here since you want to keep the white as white as possible and not muddy it with the darker blue-gray color. Even doing it this way, it was hard to avoid that and I went over the highlight areas with white again several times to keep that contrast stark. <laughs> That's the second tutorial in a row that I made that joke, except this time it's way less random. When you're done painting, powder it one more time, then slowly and very carefully peel the prosthetic off your sculpt. This is the most nerve wracking part of it all because this is after, I think, about 13 hours of work. You can powder underneath it as you go to remove some of the tackiness of the latex. And voila, the most time consuming part is over and now we can apply it with ease. Hello, here's my face. And you can glue this puppy straight on your face since it's all ready. I'd recommend using Prosade adhesive or spirit gum because they are meant to attach things to your face, but if you only have latex, that can act okay as an adhesive too. I sat it around the entire perimeter of the inside of the prosthetic, around the lips, eye sockets, and eventually added some to the lower areas of the cheeks since those made contact with my face. 
While I give that a minute to get tacky, I quickly paint in my lips, eyes, and around the sides of my face and neck with a white water activated paint. I keep wanting to say white walker activated paint. <laughs> You'll see these parts around the side of the prosthetic, so you might as well paint them while they're easy to get to. Lay the prosthetic down, lining it up with your features as you go. You have a little bit of working time to move it around before it starts to really set in place. Because we did the latex layer method for this prosthetic, chances are your edges are looking higher than the wall. So to try to remedy that, we can add more cotton and latex along the edges of the prosthetic to blend it down, at least to the edges of the hairline. This is just like what we did with the life cast, adding a layer of latex first, sitting cotton on top, and saturating that in more latex, except that this is much harder to see when you're doing it on yourself. And it gets a little scary, because you get into baby hair territory. To blend the neck into the rest of the face, I laid latex down all over, and add a few strands of cotton vertically. Cover those in latex, let it all dry, and then you're ready to paint. To paint, you'll do the same exact thing you did during the life cast portion. White all over, then that gray-blue in the deeper areas. Go up in a cloud of smoke, also known as powdering your face and neck. <laughs> Turn into your friend Valentina for a hot second. Find yourself a dire wolf, maybe a mini one if you live in an apartment. Turn back into a white walker and get dressed to go out. Or if you want to just stay in and chill, <laughs> you could do that too. But do this week's video is brought to you by Audible, which is amazing because it helps so much with these more elaborate looks, so thank you Audible for teaming up with the Zombies. I already fluff and love and use the heck out of this service. If you need more of a Game of Thrones fix until the final season, you can download and own the books Game of Thrones came from, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. I usually use Audible to download books that help me with anxiety, which by the way there's a ton and they've been super helpful to me, but you can download any kind of book of your choosing, they have every genre you can imagine, and you can download one for free with a 30 day trial membership by signing up at www.audible.com slash glamagore. Memberships include one free audiobook a month and you can keep the audiobooks whether you continue their service or not because unlike a streaming service, once you download the books, you own them. You can also swap out any books you don't like with their great listen guarantee. And I, I really do think it's a great service, you guys. I pop on an audiobook all the time and I do stuff around the house and I soak in all the knowledge. So if you zombies are interested in that trial, like I said, you can head to audible.com slash glamangore. That's it for this week. If you liked this video, bend the knee and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week for more Halloween 2017 festivities. Okay, cool. We'll be waiting outside. You can't us. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem at all. How you doing, White Walker? Great, how you doing? What's your name? My name's Sam. Hi, Sam. Dude, he's an LA pizza delivery guy. He's seen a lot worse. Wait, he didn't give us our soda. <gasps> Text him. Sam! I get to say Sam again. <laughs> Hello again. My apologies. Okay. Let's get you some drinks. There you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Enjoy. Have a good night. <coughs> you freaking out, somebody? Myself. Yourself? Mm. Nice. This is LA. Yeah. That's a bright. Where are we going? No, 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 no,